I'm just curious if you could comment on the Dow um, <laughs> loss over the weekend. I am shocked and surprised that that would be the first question you would bring up. <laughs> um, I'm conflicted on the Dow. I've been watching this uh, with great fascination. Um, mandatory disclosure: I am a Dow token holder. I, I bought. Um, you know, I'm I'm a whale in Dow spaces. Um, I own forty dollars worth of Dow token. <laughs> I know it's your law, aren't you? Um, so I bought that because uh, as I, I invest in a number of different cryptocurrencies, because um, in all of these systems, the best way to learn is to do right. And in order to do, you have to hold the token. If you want to write an Ethereum contract, you have to have Ether. If you want to use Dash or Monero or uh, Bitcoin or Storage Coin or whatever. You have to own the token, so I did buy uh, DAO tokens. I also warned people um, on social media that um, this is the first one; it's completely untested, and um, it will probably be extremely risky. I did not expect it to blow up within just four weeks of launch. That was quite fast. Um, but you know, one of the things I've said is that the most interesting lessons come not from success but from failure. If you think of this as a particle physics um, experiment, the really interesting science happens when you analyze the debris of a fire, fiery explosion. Right? You smash two particles together, create a very big bang, and then you look at what comes shooting out of that um, collision. Uh, well. We're going to be studying the debris of the fiery collapse of uh, the Dow for years, and it's going to teach us a lot about governance. I think it's important to realize that if you look at this from the perspective of capitalism, you need destruction in order to learn. And one of the things that is unique about all of these systems is we're not talking about them, we're not theoretically analyzing them, we're doing them, and that's the only way to learn. And sometimes that means spectacular problems like this. Um, and I, I think that's okay, as long as you go into it knowing the risks. And, and really, people should understand the risks before they get involved. Now, how is this going to be resolved? Uh, there are no good options at this point. Um, there's a lot of people who suggest that perhaps it should be allowed to fail, um, that it's a great security bounty for the person who discovered the flaws. And that the investors caveat emptor knew what they were getting into. Um, others say that this should precipitate a, a soft fork followed by a hard fork and other interventions in the Ethereum chain. Um, the idea is appealing. It sets up a terrible precedent um, that may cause more problems than it solves. And I'm not going to take either position because I have the luxury of not being. Uh, either a miner or one of the Ethereum core developers who has to make this very difficult decision. Um, I'm going to watch with interest, but there are no good options. In the end, though, um, I don't think this changes the, the fundamental nature of these things. Smart contracts are fascinating. They will have an enormous impact on law, on commerce, on the Internet of Things, uh, on many other technology fields. Uh, the implementation of distributed autonomous organizations, either as investment vehicles or as um, new forms of social organization for entrepreneurs, uh, for cooperatives, for uh, any form of governance-based uh, social entity. Um, all of these things are amazing, and they will happen again and again and again, and more of them will blow up spectacularly, and we will learn. Um, you know, even, even Enron taught us something, if, if not at least to improve our accounting standards and practices. Right? And, um, you know, we have uh, four of the uh, great accounting and management consulting firms here today. Um, ten years ago, there were five. Oops. So you know, sometimes that's the price you pay for innovation.